Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Honorable Judy Scro. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing during all of this? Oh, I'm doing like everybody else, uh, spending an awful lot of time in the house uh, as, um, and watching the news and uh, praying that, uh, you know, this is, we're going to get through all of this and uh, dealing with a lot of my constituents. Um, fortunately, I have uh, a lot of telephone numbers of constituents so that I can call them, make sure that they're doing well and, uh, and that their families are doing well. And if they need any help, uh, how can I help them? It's definitely been a difficult time for a lot of people. And I think even now, just looking outside and seeing the beautiful weather, a lot of people are anxious to get outside. How, how do you recommend people still find a way to stay busy when the sun is out and you, you just want to be out with your friends? Well, I think there's lots of things. This gives us a new opportunity to think of different ways of communicating, of keeping ourselves busy. Uh, you know, going for a, a walk, uh, in, a, in an area that doesn't have a lot of people so that you're maintaining the six foot distance. That whole issue of the six feet is so, so important. The virus will die when it no longer can, can get, get on to people. And uh, so the distance is the key in this whole dealing with this epidemic between washing your hands, of course, very well, but keeping the six feet distance so that the virus doesn't go from me to you and it will die naturally if there's no one else for it to feed off on. So it's really important uh, to make sure that our friends, our neighbors, all of us when we uh, go out at all, um, is that we maintain that distance. It's not just a casual thing. It's critically important as we mount a defense against this virus to make sure that we are maintaining that six feet. If we all do that, all for the next three months, this virus will probably be dead and we can get back to living our normal life. Now, a lot of other countries have slowly started to restart their economies, slowly started to, to get back into just the normal day-to-day -day life. Do you anticipate that Canada is anywhere near this right now? I think we're, uh, the Prime Minister especially, he spoke to this yesterday, he's, we're being very cautious. Uh, we want our economy up and running just as fast as everyone else. It's critically important for us to be able to help all of the people that we're trying to help is to move towards getting the economy. And hence, we go back to each and every one of us have a responsibility to kill this virus. It's not just the doctors in the hospital, folks. It's up to us to keep that distance so that we're not continuing to let the virus multiple through all of us. But the economy is important. We want to see our businesses up. Uh, it's like a ghost town. Um, you look outside, you see very little traffic, and um, it's a concern. So part of the government's uh, contribution to many of these uh, different um, wage subsidies and business subsidies is to be able to keep our businesses afloat. So when we get through this, hopefully um, by summer, that our businesses can get back to work and people can get back to earning their money and paying rent and mortgages. So the government's trying to do everything possible to help every single person in our country who's struggling. Let's talk a little bit about some of those initiatives that have been launched to help Canadian, I mean, Canadians. We've recently heard about the millions of N95 masks that are being delivered to frontline workers. What is the latest update on that? So to the best of my knowledge, we have sufficient uh, PPE as equipment for our hospitals and our nurses, our doctors, and so on. They're now moving them into um, uh, nursing homes, retirement homes, and secondary uh, facilities that didn't have them. Clearly, we were not, did not have sufficient uh, storage for this kind of, uh, of a pandemic happening. Um, but we're up to date now when, as far as I know, on the equipment. I have a granddaughter who is a nurse at Toronto General Hospital and uh, they're pretty nervous people, I have to say, all of them. And we have a big debt of gratitude to the doctors and nurses and home care workers and so on that with as scared as they are of getting every day. And uh, that's a huge, huge help. But we have to make sure they're protected. And I think at this point, it's my understanding that most of the um, hospitals in that have the equipment that they need for now. 
that that's great news and we should take this opportunity of course to thank all of the frontline workers that are going day in and day out to, to help us hopefully get through this it's not an easy job absolutely yeah uh, you know even if um you look at the grocery store clerks that are there the security guards that are keeping the six foot distance and so on the truck drivers you know people i think that in many ways we took them for granted they weren't paid a whole lot of money and yet you know they're in there every day working longer hours than ever before to make sure that you and i and and, and others have groceries uh, in our homes and so i think we um when we come through this uh, we have to not forget the people that helped to keep us alive through this difficult time absolutely and and do you think that after this there will be you know a, a new normal like i i think a lot of us it's hard for us to to know what to expect after this but when it comes to those essential workers to those people that like you said we took for granted will they have more opportunities after this than they did before I certainly hope they will. I, I, I think this is uh, something that's shaken all of us up as elected officials as well, uh, to remind us of our core responsibility, which is to serve the nation, to serve our people. And whatever we can possibly do to make a difference in their lives. Um, I certainly know that the one time that uh, I went to the local grocery store at seven o'clock in the morning, um, I made a point of thanking the security guard and the uh, cashiers and all of that because without their commitment we would not be able to have the grocery stores open and of course without the truck drivers there wouldn't be anything to buy anyway so let's not forget them and if we when we do get to go out let's make sure we say a big thank you that we appreciate everything they're doing for us and certainly the government is trying to um, every time we have a call within government officials it's where else where is the gaps what else do we need to do to help Canadians get through this difficult time together? I'd love to hear more about some of the work that is being done for seniors as well, because there has been a lot of help for students and a lot of help for small business owners, but we can't forget, of course, about the seniors that are struggling as well financially during the situation. Have there been specific plans put in place to help those? Well, one of the things that they would have got or should have already received is uh, their GST uh, rebate that comes back at this, uh, this time of the year uh, for all of the low-income families uh, and the seniors. And um, the government was able to quickly double that GST credit. So instead of getting uh, you know, $200, I gather they're getting 400, approximately $400 a person, $700 for um, two, adult, two seniors in the home. And so if any, if any of your listeners didn't receive that, they should be calling their local member of parliament uh, and asking about it. But that goes, calling your local member of parliament is maybe you've never, maybe many of your listeners have never called. This is the time where you should feel free to call. And if you're needing assistance, direction, confusion with some of the rules that are out there for you or for your families, call your local member of parliament. Um, we have, access to all of the information we can get you some answers that possibly you're having more difficulty getting and uh, and also let us know if you need something and one way or the other we'll try to find a way to help you out that's great that's great i think a lot of people never really thought about that i think it's definitely a moment where we all have to come together and really find the resources that we can need Government bureaucracy and everything else is very, very difficult, especially if you've got language issues. And, you know, um, uh, TLN is a wonderful organization to reach out to the many, many different uh, languages. And people have a lot of difficulty maneuvering the system, which is why, you know what, call your local member of parliament, call my office. Uh, we do a lot of fielding of calls and trying to direct and help people. And um, we're certainly more than happy to do that. Uh, my number of my office is 416-744-1882. Of course, our offices are closed, but we, our staff are all working as I am from home. So we'll be happy to take your calls and try and help you and your families out through this difficult time. And a lot of help that Canadians also need right now is just giving a message of reassurance or especially, you know, there are a lot of seniors specifically right now that are away from their families, they're scared to go to the grocery store, there's this inherent fear of what could happen if I step outside. So do you have a message for all of our viewers at home during this difficult time? 
I think it comes down to our faith, our faith in, 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 um, in the government that will help us because that's why you elect a government is to help you through difficult times. And of course, I think the most important thing is to pray that God will help us all through this and have confidence that there will be better days ahead of us. Um, so stay strong, stay well, phone your friends, phone your neighbors, pass the day by talking to people and reaching out. No one has any idea how much suffering another person might be going through. And so take the time to, to call, speak to your neighbors from a six foot distance, uh, but let's help each other because Canada will only be stronger as a result of this terrible epidemic. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for all of these wonderful answers for our viewers. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless everybody.